at the Little League World Series than a good hot dog. For more hot dogging, stay tuned to the Little League World Series. Now back to Carl Ravitch in the booth. My new best friend, my new best friends, Phineas and Ferb. They love you, Carl. They do, and they could have absolutely opened up there as we welcome you back to the Little League World Series presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. The whole hot dog thing, I just wondered where they were going to go with it. They but went to you. They kept it clean this time. <laughs> I was called a pencil neck earlier. <laughs> Anybody's a pencil neck, it'd be those guys, right? I mean, that's... <laughs> Maybe that's a compliment coming from them. <laughs> Maybe that's a compliment. We got a new pitcher, Jaron Robler. He's on the mound. He did appear in that game against Minnesota, two-thirds of an inning. He threw 27 pitches. Bobby V was all over it, though. They take Mason Van Nord out before he throws his 36 pitch, so he'll be available in two days after one day of rest. Let's see, the first inning, Tommy Ryan let off with a double. The second inning, Connor Daly let off with a double. And now it's Tommy Ryan again. Is he going to lead off with a double for the, for the third consecutive inning? An extra base hit for Connecticut. Strike one. Swings and misses at that. Mason Van Noor has moved from the mound over to first base. Corey Gutierrez stands there at second base. Wow, that's a breaking ball. That's a bit more. Really big hit on the mound with a big arm action through that breaking ball right at Tommy's head, and he was out of there. Calls right two. Shakes off the sign. He wants to throw that one, and he does on the corner. Call strike three. There's Tommy Ryan. He is retired. All right, Bobby V talked about it. Uh, 35 pitches, get your guy out. Mike Orlando, the Texas manager on the new pitch count rule, says it's uh, like driving a Corvette in an icy parking lot. It's touch and go at times, but you have to roll the dice. Not much risk involved with tonight's game. At least it doesn't appear to be 12-0. I don't think he's had a step on the brakes yet. No. No, I agree. 35 pitches for Mason Van Nort. No runs. Two hits allowed. Both extra base hits, both doubles. This is what you wonder about the staying power of a little league team here in Williamsport. How many pitchers do they have? Uh, anybody that's won the Little League World Series Championship will tell you you need to have at least three. And it does appear as if Texas has that many. Your pitching eligibility rules one more time. The 35 pitches that were thrown by Van Norton. He has one day of rest and he's going to be eligible to come back. So this has really worked out well for Pearland, Texas. Couldn't have scripted it better. They got the pass working and their pitching has been going well in the first couple of games. They give up a late grand slam in that 10-8 victory. Otherwise, that game was fairly one-sided against Minnesota. I had one and two. And this is high. Two and two to Chris Howell. Any words of advice for the Connecticut team? Well, they have to just get some at-bats here to get a little confidence back. They're going to be playing another game. That's a good start right there. Round ball past the third baseman, Blake Toller, and on with a single is Chris Howell. Third hit of the game for Fairfield, Connecticut. I want to remind everybody, Canada and Chinese Taipei, Bobby V, that's us, a winner's bracket game tomorrow, ESPN2, an elimination game, Mexico and Puerto Rico on ESPN at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Loser of Puerto Rico and Japan, that's the team that faces Mexico, and that was Puerto Rico, as Japan was a victor earlier over at Volunteer Stadium. One out, I'm anxious to see Taipei up, up close and personal. I think they'll be around in those final rounds of the international competition. Chinese Taipei, Japan has looked very good so far. Nick Nardone, the number three hitter for Connecticut. Look out, oh. one behind him. Oh. And the runner would advance to second and then the ball gets stuck underneath so he stays at second. And that look on Nardone's face is like, what? Yeah, that, that wasn't even close to the strike zone. Wasn't close to his body, luckily. Otherwise, he would have left the mark. This is him by two feet behind him. 
One of the things that Nick asked his folks to buy was a trampoline for the family. And you can see that he used his ability to kind of bounce out of the way of that one. The trampoline they bought a year ago, he said with all his siblings, I need it just in case I'm alone. It's been worn out, it's broken, it got used so often. One two now to Nardone. High two and two. Right now, not a lot to care about for the Fairfield side, but gray skies could always clear up. They did today. They sure did here at Williamsport. Look out, that one almost got him in the head. The runner goes down to third. There's your throw, safe. Chris Howell's at third base, and Nick Nardone's got to be wondering what in the world is going on here. One behind him and one really close to his head. This is Dodge Ball with the throw coming in. Very good slide to the outside of the base after this throw comes. Swipe tag, safe there. Fastball ripped into left center field. Nardone rounds first. He's going to step on second, sliding in safely with a double. That tells you something about somebody who had a ball thrown behind him and then right at their head. He kind of dug in even deeper and drilled that ball to left center field for an RBI double. Nick has great speed and a very good swing. He's just a super athlete, one of the finest athletes to come out of field in a long time. Looking at his hand now because he slid with his palm down and got a little Woo! scratch or two in his left hand, hopefully not his pitching hand, but he's tough. The unquestioned leader of this team and Connecticut on the scoreboard now, Jack Quinn. Oh! That one inside. They know they need three runs to stay away from that 10 run roll and allow them to play a little more here. They have so many fans who came a long oh! way to see this game. So many more sitting in front of television. Fairfield of course the great state of Connecticut and New England and certainly in Texas watching as well throughout the country 12-1 here is our oh. score that ball misses and obviously some some control problems on the mound that we hadn't seen earlier Jason Robler though is struggling trying to find his own and he's missing by a lot oh, four. that one is in there for a strike that called the ball it looked like the umpire called it a strike down the front he, did. he turned to call it a strike and then he pointed with his left hand go down the first so as close as it might have been he turns and points with his left hand and not his right <laughs> he got me he got me too so two men on for Connor Daly right, we got a strike there and that's going to strike all night I've really been throwing at that outside corner and, and getting the call. Really tough pitches to hit. That one's in there, good pitch as well. 65 miles an hour on that fastball. And Connor Daly behind in the count, 0-2 with two men on. We're in the bottom of the third of a winner's bracket game. Call third strike and Connor Daly is out. These are really tough pitches to hit. So many pitches. In the major leagues, aim at that outside corner. There's a catcher setting out. He reaches just a little. Half of the ball's on the plate. Half of the ball's off the plate. Down at the knees. Very, very difficult pitch. Very well executed by Texas all night long. A little more energy in the stands on the Connecticut side, it seems like, when Nate Klein steps up. He's in there now. One of the shortest players in Little League. This year, swings and misses at that, and he's dealing with a big pitcher on the mound. Jaron Rogler is 5'9", 154 pounds. Nate Klein is a foot shorter and about 80 pounds lighter. And he showed respect by throwing a breaking ball in this situation. He has a good fastball through Nate the breaking ball, and then the fastball. Swings and misses, does Klein. Connecticut goes down, leaving two men on base. So Nate Klein strikes out. Connecticut strikes back, though, with its first run of the game. We're going to the fourth with mighty team from Pearland, Texas, up 12-1.